Have you ever wondered what really draws you into good space ambient music? Is it the icy and ethereal quality of those ambient drones? Is it the thumping of that bass drum and the glistening of those glitch percussion sounds? Well, it very well could be. But an often overlooked and really important part of space ambient music is the lead sound, or the space plucks as we like to call them. And in today's video, we're gonna dive straight into that topic and I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite patches of all time, and then we're gonna recreate that patch inside of Vital. So hopefully you guys are gonna see how I create my space plucks and you'll learn something along the way. So as always, before we start, smash that like button on the way in, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you feel called to do so, and let's dive in. All right, here we are inside of Ableton Live. Now I've got a couple tracks set up, including a little demo here that we will dive into in just a minute. But I wanna draw some attention to the three or four MIDI tracks that we have over here on the right-hand side. Now, this is a blank instance of Vital, so we're gonna uh, design our patch here. Now, as I told you, um, the patch that I was referencing in the intro is one of my favorite patches. It's, you can hear it heavily on the first couple signs of life records, as well as the first couple ascendant records. Uh, it's the most beautiful sound, <laughs> and it's just a simple synth sound. And uh, it's by my dear friend and one of my favorite sound designers, uh, Luftrum, Soren Heibel from Denmark. And he has been such a great uh, mentor for me, um, coming up the game and learning how to design sounds. He's always been there. And even when I was first starting out and we met, he was never discouraging. He was always completely on board and told me to just keep going and keep pushing myself. And eventually I can get there um, with what I was doing. And anyway, regardless, this is a very uh, old patch off of, I think it was Luftrum 9 uh, because it must've been that old because it was on the first Science of Life record. And it's a patch called Save the Forest. And it's on D.Va, of course. And I just want to kind of like play this patch so you guys can experience what it's all about. Maybe you'll recognize the sound immediately. So you hear that sound and immediately like, I'm completely transported. Like as soon as I was like, oh my God, there's the sound, right? And you know, for years I used this sound uh, with of course like some slight modifications, but then eventually I was like, okay, well, this is great and all. But like Diva is not an easy synthesizer by any respect. It's a beautiful sounding synthesizer, but I've never found it very intuitive like I do with Serum or Vital. So to like recreate that sound, uh, it was kind of important to me. So that's when I first started designing sounds. I'm like, okay, well, let's try to recreate Save the Forest. Like that's, that's a classic, right? So I got pretty close on uh, ancient technology in Serum, uh, my first sound set. And I think I say, I, I say close, like it's pretty close. So let's take a listen. This is called a patch called Cobblestones, again, off of ancient technology. You see, like, I mean, that's pretty close, right? Like <laughs> I spent hours on that, just dialing in that sound and also dissecting um, what makes Save the Forest so good. So let's, let's actually go back to Save the Forest and we'll dissect as best we could can uh, given the nature of D.Va. So over here in the oscillators, we have a triangle wave and combined with a sawtooth wave and a sine wave. Um, the mix is mostly, it's basically weighted towards the sine wave. And I think the most important part of the patch is not only the um, filter envelope. So we have a very heavy handed filter envelope with a low cutoff and high resonance. Okay, that's kind of important. But the ADSR over here is a very fast attack. Mm, not really a long decay, but there is some sustain and release in there in both the uh, envelopes one and two. Okay, and there's a really nice delay going on here and a plate reverb. So that is basically Save the Forest. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the scope, here's kind of the shape that it makes. It's kind of sine wavy with a little bit of tilt to it, I guess. But what I love about Save the Forest is as you get higher on the keys, it's the filter envelope starts to open up. Um, and I, again, I tried to recreate that inside of my patch. Um, so let's see what we can do inside of Vital. Now, when I approach a space pluck, 
it all, it's all about not, number one, the oscillators and number two, the envelope. Okay. And we're going to do this approach. Like I said, we're going to do save the forest, but we're going to put a little twist on it. And we're going to do this one envelope to rule them all trick. Okay. So I'm going to load up the basic shapes patch over here and we'll start with that triangle wave. So it's the one, it's the third one over. Okay. So we're going to delete these. And then we're going to select all these keyframes. We're going to delete those. Now we're left with just one keyframe here. Okay. So if I move the wavetable frame thing, it's not moving. Now we just have a triangle wave. Okay. So let's also leave the default um, sawtooth wave here. So that's our triangle plus sawtooth. And then we'll put a sine wave here by loading up the factory patch and the basic shapes again. And then we'll go in here and we will delete everything else, remove the keyframes. Now we're just left with three single cycle wavetables, uh, a triangle, a sawtooth and a sine wave. So let's play that patch, make sure I'm on the right record here. We're gonna play this patch and you're gonna hear. Okay, well, hold on, let me turn off some of that delay. It's, that's basically it. I mean, like, okay. That's a good start, right? Like if you can, if you can dither down the oscillators to exactly what that patch is, uh, by creating, you know, blending the three shapes. There you go. So let's now um, adjust the envelope. So as I said, it has kind of some decay, a little bit of sustain and some release right here, okay? So this is envelope two. We'll also do the same with envelope one. So those two envelopes will sort of match each other, all right? And now we have that snappy poppy you know, plucky envelope that everyone knows and loves. Okay, cool. So these envelopes are basically identical, but what we're gonna do, this is the amp envelope, and this is what is, we're gonna use this as the filter envelope. Let's um, now add a filter, and we're gonna make sure that that filter covers all three oscillators. And then we're gonna drag the modulation handle over to the filter envelope. So then now we got that, okay? And the resonance is key here, right? So that resonance gives it that bouncy, that kind of like wow, wow, wow kind of sound. Cool, I love that, all right? That, so the, the resonance is sweeping through um, those frequencies and creating that sort of plucky sound, okay? Cool, great start, all right? So now let's come over to the effects and we're gonna add a compressor. Now I debated on giving it a multi-band or a, a single band compressor, but eventually we're just gonna go with the multi-band, okay? And then we're gonna add uh, some of that delay. And so we'll, maybe we'll go with a ping pong delay and I don't know if dotted is the appropriate move here, but we'll, we'll give it a try anyway. Let's go tempo. We'll go tempo, that's fine. And then we'll ping pong delay that. Uh, feedback is at 42, and then we'll be about like 60% around, give or take, okay? That's a little too much. We'll go turn the feedback down. There you go. And now we're gonna wash the whole thing in reverb. So let's cut it out here and then we're gonna put a nice, um, cool, all right? Nice. Nice, okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the velocity uh, handle over here and we're gonna drag that over here and make sure it's kinda not like, I mean, it's, it's there. So as we get higher, um, we also can take the um, octave note or, um, and we can take that and move it over here. So as it gets higher, it gets higher. All right, that's good. Um, that's pretty close, right? All right, now here's where we're gonna put our little twist on it. So now we have sort of the save the forest, right? Let's start adding some frames onto these wavetables and see where we can take this. All right, so let's add another frame here at the end and we're gonna do the trick that I've gone over on this channel several times is adding some harmonics to each of your waves and then you got like this. You can already hear right away the wave is starting to change. We can add some of the, change some of the phase and then we're gonna switch the blending mode to spectral blend. And now as you can see, we have uh, a triangle morphing into this whatever thing we have. Okay, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach envelope two, like I said, one envelope to rule them all. So as we pluck, the wavetable is now moving, all right? And you can apply this technique to like all kinds of parameters. Uh, it doesn't just have to be limited to the wavetable frame itself. So let's also do that with the uh, sawtooth. 
And the sawtooth is a little harder to work with, I find. Uh, so like, we're gonna have to like really mangle this thing. Uh, do, 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 and then mess with that. You still have that straight line in the middle, or whatever. And then boom, like this. Something that we like. Okay. And now we'll change the blending mode to spectral blend. There we go. And now we can tie that envelope to it. Here we go. So that kind of gives us a little bit of uh, uh, interest, right? When we, every time we pluck. Now, not only are we changing the filter envelope, but we're also changing the wavetable frame. And it's giving us just that little bit more dynamic range, okay? So that's cool, right? So now we can also tie an LFO. Let's tie an LFO to sync and we'll put it on sine wave. And um, we will um, tie that to maybe the pan over here and like make it kind of slow, like two over one. Ah, one over one. And we'll make that bipolar so it goes left to right. All right, that, now this is sounding good to me, right? So like real simple plucks, if you just add the right delay, the right reverb, and then sort of like pan them in the right direction, maybe we'll go here, put this one over here, and this one over here. Now you have that kind of wide, open, spacey pluck kind of sound. Now let's play the demo track and we'll see what we can um, add to it, all right? So here we got just like a, you know, simple, <laughs> like down and dirty signs beat, right? So. Okay, so let's, let's key in some notes here. We're playing in the key of D minor. So let's grab a pencil and we're just gonna go, here we go, hold shift. There we go. All right, and then. All right. There we go. There it is right there. And boom. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, like, space flux. Now that move, I mean, the way that moves, that's cool, that works for us. Even if the tempo was slower. Ooh, that's even, that's nasty. I love it. You can adjust, now the key here is adjusting the filter envelope. Oh, that's very Save the Forest-like, yeah? So the filter envelope control inside of that envelope is crucial. And so if you dial that in right, you're gonna get the sound that you want. Now, another thing that we can do is we can hit filter two and then have that be covering or filtering filter one, and then you can use this To affect the overall sound, it's like another master filter. I love that effect. We can tie that to a sine wave, put this on sync, and we'll tie that to a sine wave like this, and then we'll pull this over here. Four over one. Turn up the resonance. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> Just like that, all right? So hopefully you guys got something out of this little mini tutorial today. Uh, if you guys have Diva, I highly recommend that you buy Soren's sound sets for, I mean, there's so many different synthesizers that he does. A lot of his newer stuff is for Omnisphere and various synthesizers, but I've always been a fan. And thanks so much for all the inspiration, Soren. You really uh, changed my life for the better here. So anyway. That's your little space block tutorial. If you guys found this useful, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back again with more tutorials very soon. In the meantime, as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Science of Life, and I will see you all on the other side.